Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with DJ Misha and DJ Tim about their massive classic Axis. Enjoy! Axis is a track produced by Dutch duo Misha van der Heijden and Tim Hogesteger. The track came out back in the year 1995 as DJ Misha and DJ Tim. It was the second release on Misha's own label, Extrax. It became a big success in the clubs and in March 1996, Axis even reached the number 16 position of the UK singles chart. During the years the track has been remixed plenty of times, but also the original 1995 version still gets played at parties on a regular basis. Because of the 25th anniversary of Axis, I sat down with Misha and Tim to ask them about the story behind this classic. My first question was how they got to meet each other. I think we both worked in a, in a commercial club uh, called Alcazar. I think Tim was the, the DJ. Yeah, I played there. Yeah. And yeah. I was doing uh, the lights. <laughs> I was a light jockey. Okay. <laughs> so how, how old were you guys back then? Wow, yeah, I was. I think I was 18 at the time. Yeah, yeah. 19, 20, 21 yeah. maybe, something like that. Yeah. And what kind of music did you listen to back then? So we're talking about 94 right now. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, super wide range. I was playing in this, yeah, this commercial club, but also in a, a techno club in, in Rotterdam called Night Town. So it was very wide. Uh, at, uh, yeah, at Alcazar played, yeah, what was it? Funk, disco, that kind of stuff. And uh, well, Night Town was really techno. Detroit techno was really what inspired me uh, personally. So it was a, for me, it was a wide range of, uh, of things. Yeah. So when did you guys decide to start working together? I think it was uh, because we both hated the music that was played in uh, in the commercial club. They were like, ah, oh, you know, I gotta play this track again. Of, uh, you know, we gotta make something else. So and I was already doing Die Witness at the time, mm -hmm. and then so that Tim came to the studio and uh, we just started playing. I think. Probably one of the first tracks that we made was Access. Yeah, yeah, we made it in. in one Maybe it was even the first one. I, I don't the remember. First, the first track we did together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to talk about that one. Um, you did it in the year 1995, Access, a long time ago. Was there still something you remember from the production process of the track? Whew. Yeah, I, re I remember where the studio was <laughs> because it was 200 meters from here. But uh, yeah, we did we did a lot of takes with the 303. Yeah, everything, every, yeah. The, the whole arrangement was done on the mixer, you know, it was not like uh, like you do it nowadays, like bar by bar by bar, it was just uh, one loop and you just uh, uh, make, the, yeah. make the arrangement on, on the mixer, you know, you yeah. throw something in or you leave something out and so yeah, that's 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 how the track uh, came to be. Yeah. So besides the 303, what other equipment was used for the track? Yeah, uh, a right? cou couple of samplers, mm -hmm. 909, uh, what else? I think that's it. It was okay. pretty, pretty basic. Yeah. yeah. So where did the inspiration for Axis come from? I, I, it's hard to say inspiration. We just got together in the studio, had fun. That was the basic idea. Yeah. Let's just try out where, where it takes us. And we just had loads of fun making that track. And at the time, yeah, no idea that it would become a hit. It was just two guys having fun in the studio. And um, yeah, but really, really Wanted to, to make it uh, a finished track. That that's that's for sure. It's a bit, it's a bit ironic uh, that we we came to the studio together to because we wanted to escape the commercial music, and then Axis was one of the most commercial <laughs> tracks that we ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the track was done in like two hours time. Is that true? Yeah. Well, two hours, maybe four, I guess. Right. Nah, it was it was, it was, it was fairly quick. Very quick. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the EP we can find two other tracks as well, Extravaganza and The Switch. Uh, were these done that fast as well? No. I think that was the, we made those in other uh, sessions, but that, that, that was more, what was, we spent more time on that. I can't even remember Extravaganza, I don't even remember The Switch, I remember because there's a, there's a sample in uh, the, something with The Switch. Yeah. Extravaganza, I don't even remember how the track goes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so what happened after the release? Did it become a success straight away? Uh, that, yeah, this was funny because we said, okay, uh, uh, we call it access. Uh, well, you, you need a title for tracks, and uh, yeah, we thought that perhaps this is gonna open a lot of doors for us. So that was just a vague idea, and then we just went along our business. Uh, and then I think a few months later, 
got called by a yeah, music magazine from the uh, UK. They wanted to interview us in the Hilton. And we're like, okay, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? So apparently uh, it took off in the UK. And yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, when, when it started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in March 1996, Access reached the number 16 position in the UK uh, singles chart. Uh, how did you find out the track made it into the charts there? I can remember we got a, a call or a request uh, if we wanted to come on uh, top of the pops. <laughs> and like, top of the pops, well, uh, you know, what we're gonna do there? Uh, you know. So uh, yeah, then then we knew that it was uh, pretty big, but you know, it, it was before internet or uh, you know, there was no Facebook or whatever. So uh, everything traveled a lot slower than it does uh, today. So I, uh, yeah, I think it was through the through the record company, uh, something like that. Yeah. So did you actually go to the top of the box? No, we didn't go, no, because uh, it was like we were on the border if, if we had to go or not, look, uh, the, the, the yeah. top 10 or something had yeah. to go and uh, whatever was higher, uh, they didn't have to go and I guess it never reached to the top 10 or whatever. Yeah. Access was the second release on your label Extrax, uh, I guess that the success of Access was really good for the label as well? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. But of course, uh, uh, Tripping Out was already doing uh, very well as well, but uh, I think because Access was uh, was so big in the UK, and I think it was mainly because of the 303. There was like you know like uh, hard trends, whatever they uh, they wanted to call it, and um, so that 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 became uh, one of the, the biggest tracks of the of the label. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many copies have been sold in total during the years? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got a, a golden record there for uh, 100,000 copies in uh, in '96. Uh, but in total, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, so the track is 25 years old now. Uh, are there any plans for the 25th anniversary? No, we were talking about uh, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, no, no concrete plans. But you know, who knows? Who yeah. knows what happens? Yeah. Um, there have been quite a few remixes of the track. Uh, people such as Red Jerry, Secret Cinema, John SQ, Thomas Schumacher, amongst others, uh, remix the track. If you could, if you could pick whoever you wanted for a new remix, no matter what style, who would you choose then? Wow, a difficult one. <laughs> Um, I would love to hear a drum and bass version, yeah. something completely different. Yeah. I, I mean, so, so, not because it's my track, but uh, or our track. But I think some tracks you shouldn't remix, and I think Access is one of those mix. Is one of those tracks. It's like really difficult to yeah. to, to remix to get a. So it, if you if you do a remix, it should be completely different style. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of Access? Wow. Yeah. Do a lot of tours together. Yeah, we did a lot of tours. States and uh, Australia. Australia. Uh, highlight, yeah. Touring. <laughs> Touring, yeah. Touring was yeah. fun, yeah. So yeah, yeah, did Access also help you guys a lot with your, with, with your DJ careers? Yeah, of course, of course that had yeah. a huge impact. Yeah, yeah. The, the international tours, doing tours, yeah, like I said, in Australia for two weeks, U US. Europe, loads of uh, gigs. Yeah. yeah, of course, that's uh, due to the. Uh, yeah, on the other hand, we, we were also asked. I don't know about Tim, but I was also a, a, a lot asked on, on 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 parties where the music was because when Access came, uh, Access came out, some house DJs played it on mi minus five, uh, you know, the, the pitch, and some hard trance DJs played it on plus eight or a plus six or whatever. And that kind of parties I would go to as well. So sometimes I would arrive on a party and everything was you know like 150. And that's completely not my style of DJing. So, yeah, that was a uh, yeah. You know, I understand. So, are you guys both still active at making new music or DJing? Yeah, it's, uh, I've got my studio in Rotterdam, but it's more like okay, just release uh, free time. Just want to fool around a bit with the with, with the gear. Um, that's for me the, the the main incentive. Not necessarily bring stuff out, yeah. but uh, and under what name do you release? Uh, Frame Six. Yeah. And, and uh, what kind of style is it? That's uh, techno. Techno. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, work together with uh, yeah, Oliver, Oliver Cobb from Indulge. Uh, just cool. having fun. Yeah. yeah. And you? Yeah. Uh, I stopped. Um, I didn't have a lot of fun uh, making music anymore uh, in around 2008, and then I switched to mastering, and that's uh, where we're sitting uh, yeah. now. That's, so that's your full-time job now. That's uh, absolutely full-time. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of music do you guys listen to in your spare time? Nothing. Nothing? I don't even have speakers uh, downstairs in my living room. Nothing. I don't have a CD player, turntable, everything is here. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by music the whole day, so when I'm done, I'm pretty much done. Yeah, okay. And for you? 
Yeah, loads, loads, loads of stuff. Uh, especially now, yeah, it's so easy to find music on YouTube or wherever. So I have these huge playlists on YouTube, just collecting stuff I hear on the radio. I listen a lot to Feep Radio, the French radio, uh, Worldwide FM, and you get, yeah, fed with all kinds of new stuff. So yeah. it's quite, uh, yeah, broad range. But when I buy records, uh, it's it's mostly techno yeah. still. Yeah. Okay. And the last question: Pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Is it big? No. <laughs> I really don't understand why people have such a big issue with pineapple on, on pizza. I, I don't know. Well, I'm allergic to a, a pineapple. For me, it's simple. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I see some discussion sometimes. And I'm like, I hope the algorithm on Facebook is deleting me from this discussion because I have no idea what it's about, really. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Cheers. All right, that was it, this week's vlog, my interview with DJ Misha and DJ Tim about their classic, Axis. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe. And since Misha did so many other tracks, I did a few other interviews with him as well, and you can expect those in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.